Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul, and I'm connecting with you today from Honolulu, Hawaii. I am at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. Today is a Tuesday. I think it's the 10th of the month, maybe the 11th of the month. I should probably pay closer attention to the calendar, but I've never known to be someone that remembers dates. <coughs> Regardless, today is a very important day because I'm here to serve you. The subject matter today is the connectivity between the emotional condition of anxiety and depression and what is known in traditional Chinese medicine as the fire element. Uh, so I will go a little bit more into that today as we go, but for those that just tuned in, I wanted you to be aware that that is what the subject matter is today. Yesterday we focused on the condition, the emotional condition of anger and its association with the wood element. And I will go into, again, a minor uh, sharing and teaching on the nature of the five elements, which is traditional Chinese medicine-based wisdom, and uh, help you tie in the nature of the fire element and its associations. Of course, the core of the subject matter today will be uh, depression and anxiety, and how it's looked at from the perspective of Tao, from the perspective of soul, and how we will use aspects of the fire element, uh, which, is, which is a wisdom based in uh, Eastern philosophies and Eastern medicines, <coughs> to have a greater understanding. So the first thing I want to make sure everyone is clear about is I'm not a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, nor do I have any, any education in any of that. The wisdom I'll be sharing is directly from Master Shaw's books, uh, specific to the uh, fire element, and, uh, and he is actually a a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, as well as a world-renowned uh, acupuncturist and very, very talented healer. So that's where the sharing will come from that I uh, refer to the fire element aspects. However, when it comes to the, the nature of the emotional condition of depression and anxiety, I do have some insights that I believe you will find very um, enjoyable and revealing and hopefully bring to you some new possibilities of of ways in which you can maintain balance in these uh, emotions that can bring a great deal of imbalance into our lives. <clears throat> and so I look forward to serving you with that information. For those that are listening on podcast for the uh, first, second, or third time, um, my name is Master Paul, and I am a, a master teacher who has studied underneath Dr. and Master Shaw. And Dr. and Master Shaw, so you know who he is, so that you know who I am. He is a world-renowned healer. He is an author of over 21 books, 11 of which have reached New York Times bestseller. And he teaches the power of soul, that soul can, can heal itself, and that soul can heal others. And his basic foundation and teaching that has made him so well-respected, popular, and well-renowned in the round the world as a, a world-class healer <clears throat> is that he recognizes as a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, as a doctor of American medicine. He understands that they serve a very important purpose, that they serve humanity in a very important and necessary way. Uh, but also as a student who grew up in China under different Eastern philosophies, he looked into the natural world of healing as well. And he explored uh, and became a Grand Master in Tai Chi, in Qi Gong, in Feng Shui, in the I Ching, uh, and in um, other modalities. He actually is a great Grand Master in all of those. Uh, so it's very difficult to become uh, respected in those traditions as there are so many masters and he is at the pinnacle of each. <clears throat> um, he's also world-renowned and world-respected uh, philanthropist in the, in the area of love, peace, and harmony. He promotes tirelessly uh, globetrotting around the world uh, many, many months of the year, somewhere between eight and ten months a year, uh, speaking and sharing on love and peace and harmony. He has been recognized by uh, the World Peace Councils and has been keynote speaker in many of them on this subject matter. So he is a good soul with good intention to serve humanity. And so I started paying attention to him, his wisdoms, and what he was teaching in his books that could bring uh, balance and maintain balance in my life. And I found some significant results 
uh, which caused me to look further into how I can serve others with this wisdom. And so that's what I'll be sharing with you today. I'll be working through uh, one or two of Master Shah's books. One of them is called Dao Song Dao Dance. Uh, that's this baby blue one. It's a very nice color. I love that one. And the other one is called Soul Healing Miracles, which came out, uh, I believe, after the Dao Song Dao Dance. But they're both very, very important and powerful pieces of wisdom. So I'll share from one or both of those books today. First, we're going to stop and connect with everyone that's tuning in. <clears throat> and so, and for those again that are on podcast, you can watch me live on Facebook. Uh, I am on every day, Monday through Thursday, and it's uh, 2 p.m. HST, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be about midnight in the UK, about 5:30 in the morning in India. Uh, that makes it about noon in Australia, so you can kind of figure out your time zone accordingly. But you can watch me live instead of listening on podcast if you desire. So welcome, Patricia. Welcome, Petra Marie. Welcome, uh, Kristen Rojas. Aloha, Dana Knapp. Aloha, Susan. Welcome, CJ. Welcome, Sharon. And Sarah MacArthur. Good to see you, Sarah. Aloha, Estelita. And welcome Elizabeth, welcome Kathy, welcome Pat, and welcome Zilki, aloha Stephanie, thank you for your beautiful comments, be new, thank you, aloha Lisa, welcome Janet, and Tammy Hunter, good to see you here, welcome Suzanne Richards, welcome Kristen Strachan, aloha Linda, and Alexandria, good to see you, thank you for coming, welcome Katie, welcome Katie Nada. So as more people uh, join, we're going to go ahead and connect. Now today I am at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. Behind me is a calligraphy and uh, you can see part of it is this character here is Guang, which means light, and only part of the top half, which is Ling. Soul Light is the name of this calligraphy. And it is an extraordinary calligraphy, one of Master Shaw's earlier ones, but a, a big, you know, six foot one. Um, so it is shining blessings to you as we speak. And of course, being in the center is shining blessings on you. So let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul. And we utilize the source soul song of love, peace and harmony because it is a universal servant. It, it is here to serve humanity. It's in 50 languages. And you can download it at lovepeaceharmony.org. But we're going to use it to clear our blockages so that we can be fully present to receive the greatest value from today's wisdom teachings and blessings, okay? So, sit up straight. Place your hands in soul light, soul service hand position, which is much like a prayer, but we drop our left hand in front of our heart center. We keep the right hand gently pointed upward towards heaven. <clears throat> Close your eyes and let us become fully present. Dear the divine, the Tao, dear our beloved source creator, we love you, honor you, respect you. We're very, very, very grateful for the opportunity to be with you today. And we ask for your presence at this time to come to be with all of us, to sit in our heart centers, to guide and bless this wisdom, teachings, and blessings. We ask our individual heavens team, guides, angels, and saints. We ask you to please be present for each of the souls that are watching today. We love you, honor you, appreciate you, and respect you. We thank you to our Heavens team, to the Divine Tao and our Source Creator for your love, for your protection, for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your blessings in our life. We ask for forgiveness if we have complained or been unable to see all the ways in which you have brought blessings into our life and protected us from things far worse than what we might be complaining about. We thank you at this time for opening our heart and soul to the greatest wisdom that can be attained on this subject matter of depression and anxiety and its association to the fire element. We ask the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes to please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us at this time. So for those that are new, please just close your eyes, receive the blessing, everybody else. Also, of course, keep your eyes closed and let's chant to serve. 
So thank you to the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. Uh, Kristen has posted the words for those that are new to that song and the link to download it for complimentary for free and all the possibilities to share it to the world are at lovepeaceharmony.org.org. So thank you all for coming and also thank you for hitting the share button and letting other people know about today's topic. You never know who it could benefit. One of the unique things about Facebook is it, it has this spider web effect. You, you maybe hit share once and it lands on a friend's page and then it goes from that friend's page and another friend sees it who could have the emotional condition of depression or anxiety. <laughs> and so the, uh, the wisdom that will be shared today, the, uh, the blessings that will be shared today could have a great value for them. So I appreciate that and heaven uh, if it was your share that created that benefit to them, guess whose Akashic record heaven blesses? Yours. That's right. Because you could have saved a person's life. <clears throat> One of the uh, great teachings that I heard Master Shah teach once was that if you save a person's life, you get more virtue than if you built 1,000 seven-layer gold Buddhist temples to serve that, uh, that uh, religion, if you will. And that's an evident statement, but it's also a true statement. I had a student who had contacted me once and te was texting back and forth. And they asked, you know, uh, if, if, if I was doing something that on an energetic basis to try to save a person's life, uh, but, you know, I was getting harmed for it, would that be a bad thing? And that's a very difficult answer because it's not our stuff to be offering blessings for. We need to be, we need to have protections, we need to be conscious and have no ego in the process of offering any service to serve others. <clears throat> uh, but the, the short answer to her was, it's always good to save someone's life. And so um, I wish to offer that credit to my teacher, Master Shah, as he has probably saved well over a thousand lives. Uh, just based on the 10 years that I've known him and the many, many thousands of testimonials on videos. And the beautiful part about him is he's a very humble servant. He brings this wisdom to us today. Now, I'll be referring to the Tao Song Tao Dance book, which is, which is a very, um, the name of the book, Tao Song Tao Dance. Uh, it's very lyrical. And uh, on, on first glance, one might not grasp that it is exceedingly highly educational an exceedingly valuable slice of wisdom on the nature of opening up all of your spiritual channels, your seven chakras, your Y jiao, which most people don't even know what a Y jiao is. That's the space along the entire length of your back. Um, they would not know that information is here on the five elements. And they would not know that just by reading this book, they can receive 40 transmissions to, uh, to bring healing to their life. And that with those transmissions, they could offer blessings to others. So it's kind of a hidden gem that a lot of people don't know about. Dao Song Dao Dance. And so I'm on page 54, and I'm going to do a little um, reminder 
<coughs> of what I brought up yesterday, and that was that uh, on the, the overall general subject of the five elements. Again, I will restate, I am not uh, educated or trained in this modality other than what I read and understood from my teachings from my teacher. And so this information is general. And so the five elements are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And they're not just limited to the human being. They do run through, according to the ancient wisdom teachings, they do run through Mother Earth and all planets and all universes. They represent aspects of balance. And so <clears throat> in the human body, the, we, we covered yesterday the wood element, which, as a quick reminder, has associations with the yin and yang paired organs of the liver and the gallbladder, and has associations with the tendons, with the eyes and vision, and as well as the emotional condition of anger. And so if you missed that yesterday, please go back and watch that video. You can go to my website. Above my video, it tells you how to access the archives. And if you're on a podcast, of course, you can just go through and uh, search under the subject. Uh, for those, by the way, interested in, in listening on podcasts instead of watching, uh, I'm on iTunes, I'm on Stitcher, and you have to literally in the search bar type in the Tao of awakening to your spiritual, let's see, is it, I got to think of the exact name. Ah, can't think of the exact name at this moment. It'll come to me. It's new. Give me a break. I need a new Tao brain. So anyway, with the uh, five elements, today is the fire element. And the fire element, according to traditional Chinese wisdom, traditional Chinese medicine, has direct associations, on page 54 I'll read it, to the yin organ, which is the heart, to the yang organ, which is the small intestines. A lot of people have no associations with small intestines and the heart. Who would think something like that? So this information in, in, in traditional American medicine and Western medicine, they would say, oh, pff, that's just, how could, how could the heart have any correlation whatsoever to the small intestine? But then again, we're still speaking of the same institution that denies such a thing as energy meridians, which acupuncture has been working quite well with for over 5,000 years. So just because they're not able to see that correlation or validate it using their measurement tools does not mean it's accurate. So there is a correlation, according to traditional Chinese medicine, to the small intestine. And so, for example, if you have uh, consistent digestion issues, it could impact your heart. If you have heart issues, it could impact your ability to, to process and digest food properly. That's a similar correlation there. There is also the body tissue, which is the blood vessels. And so it stands to reason the heart and all the blood vessels, the capillaries, the veins, they have associations to the fire element as well. Um, the bodily fluid is sweat. Sweat is actually associated with the fire element. Again, hot, sweating, kind of common sense. And then we have the, uh, the sense organ. It's like the sensory organ yesterday for the wood element was the eyes. The sensory organ for the, um, for the heart is actually the tongue and the sensory of taste. Interesting, huh? Also, the, uh, the tongue, if you've ever re received blessings from me or you do practices with me, we do the uh, what do I tell you to do? Sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth. You've heard me say this before. Why? Because the energy meridians run through the seven chakras, not the meridian, excuse me, the, the Tao Song channel runs through the seven chakras, back down in front of the spine. This is one of the two major channels, but it has to pass by right here, the tongue. This is a break point in that meridian process. So when we touch our tongue to the roof of the mouth, we're connecting that energetic break point, and it allows the chi to flow through our body more readily. Also, uh, w uh, sometimes I don't do it so much now, unless you're a more advanced student, but if you squeeze your anus uh, for a few seconds and then release, this closes the other uh, energetic point. Uh, and so the combination of the two, I wouldn't suggest sitting there keeping it squeezed, but the combination of, of touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth and 
I'm squeezing a few times down there, it signals to the energetic chi uh, function moving through your body that it's time to move, that there is no restriction to the flow. So just a little side note on the association of the tongue, the fire element, and flow of chi. The uh, unbalanced emotion associated with the fire element is depression, anxiety, and excitability. Overjoy. Overjoy is actually an unhealthy, you know, overly exuberant, just like, oh my God, oh my God, this is amazing, oh my God. If somebody's like that a lot, that's actually uh, an imbalanced emotion because you'll probably also find that person depressed a few days from now. And so these are the swings. You have depression, you have anxiety, which are two different parts uh, of, of, you know, depression, of course, is, is, is very uh, melancholy, whereas anxiety, it, uh, uh, a different word, which is not the same, is more related to a fear-based reaction and response. But according to traditional Chinese medicine, there is a direct correlation to the heart chakra, the foot chakra, the message center, Sorry about that, I forgot to turn off my volume on the phone call. <clears throat> and um, is also associated obviously with the fire element. So, raise your hand if you know of anybody who's had or has, including yourself, depression or anxiety or excitability, over excitability to over joy. I see like 80% of the hands go up. Almost everybody knows somebody that has conditions of this nature. And so, um, goodness for things like modern medicine, it does assist a person to at least maintain a semblance of balance when they're going through the normal processes of the day. But they still suffer uh, tremendously, and a great deal of the suffering is related to the emotional and mental bodies. Now, the way Master Shaw would approach this, using the wisdom that he has brought to us these last 20 years, is with the power of soul. And what he would share with us is that there is a root cause for every blockage that we have in our life. It doesn't matter if it's a financial blockage, doesn't matter if it's pain in the knee. The, the answer, based on what he has brought to us that I personally uh, agree with, is spiritual debt, or spiritual virtue. If we have something good in our life, we have earned that. Our ancestors have done good, we have done good, therefore we are we're receiving good things. And wherever it's showing up in your life, you have earned that. And the flip side of that coin, if you're having an emotion, uh, an imbalanced set of conditions, and it's especially happening for a long time, then that has also been earned on some level in the form of a spiritual debt. And so what he says is, um, heal the soul first and then the mind and body will follow. What does that mean? That means that the soul lives forever, where we, the human being, do not. We have a temporary lifespan. Live 100 years, die. Live 100 years, die. Do it again. Who wants to sign up and do this again and again and again, right? Are you having such a fabulous time? You want to keep doing this again and again and again? Most of us would probably say not so much. I mean, me, this life, I would have to say, yeah, it's been pretty awesome. I'd probably do it better uh, once I had this wisdom, but most of us would say, no, probably not too interested in signing up for this one again. <clears throat> and so the nature of soul, the nature of Tao, the nature of this wisdom is to assist us to stop repeating the mistakes, to clear up our spiritual debts, and to unwind the unpleasant ways in which they show up in our life. In today's subject matter, depression and anxiety, it shows up in our life in a very, very unpleasant way. It puts us in an out of control set of conditions, one in which we feel helpless and in many cases hopeless. And so one of the beautiful things about the wisdom and teachings that Master Shah brings is there's a different potential set of solutions. He makes no promises in any of his materials and I make none on this live stream in this podcast. What I can share with you is that if you do the suggested practices, if you receive blessings either through the transmissions that he places in his books, through his calligraphies, through any of the free uh, aspects that are available through his through uh, tv.drshaw.com or, or his website or any of, of the, uh, the practitioners that practice soul healing, I can say that you could maintain 
much more balance in your life. And that's based on having done this for 10 years. And it's certainly at least another choice that is beyond uh, pharmaceuticals. And they, they serve a purpose, but over time, they do have a tendency to degrade our physical being because they're, they're bringing a foreign substance into our organs and systems. And so we don't want to say anything negative about them. We want to honor them. We want to recognize that if there's a potential for a different solution, it's probably wise to look at that. And so um, when we look at the possibility of soul to bring a solution, we want to look at what is the, the core reason? What is the, the root cause? According to the wisdom and teachings that Master Shah has brought to us, the root cause is spiritual debt, karma. Where does it reside for this condition of depression, uh, anxiety, fire element, imbalance? Guess what? It resides in your heart center. The heart center is not the physical heart, but it is related to the fire element and it is also known as the fourth chakra. Some people call it message center. Master Shah refers to it as message center and fourth soul house. Same, same. The uh, message center, fourth soul house, is one of the most important soul houses in the human body. It is the powerhouse for your uh, emotions. When they're balanced, you're feeling up and ready to go. It is the, emo it is the uh, center for your communication to the soul world. That's why it's called the message center for receiving communications from the soul world. Every human being has that birthright. Every human being can communicate to the soul world and very often does <laughs> but they might not acknowledge it or believe that it's really happening. And some of us, uh, we have the ability but have not opened up those channels yet. Another great value I appreciate about Master Shah is in this book, Tao Song Tao Dance, he gives you practices to open your chakras, to release the blockages. He transmits into the book uh, uh, literally transmissions that if you do the practices, they literally start self-clearing the blockages and you will, with practice, feel better and better and better. If you're doing practice, it's very difficult to not have good results. And so what he would say about these particular emotional conditions is that you want to do several things. One, you want to recognize what the source is. His teachings would say that if you are suffering depression, if you are suffering anxiety, then either you or your ancestors in this or a previous time had created suffering upon others that brought about these same emotional conditions. So if we were to disassociate ourselves from this condition, let's say I, I'm blessed, I don't believe I've ever had these, but um, let's say I started having these conditions, I would have to look at it and go, man, I must have made some very unpleasant choices or my ancestors did in the past, in which maybe I took somebody's land or took their business, or maybe I burned their boat, which was their livelihood. Maybe I did any number of things that I'm completely unaware of, and it caused them to lose their livelihood, to not have money to feed their family, to maybe uh, somebody gets sick and they don't have money to pay for their sick and they, and they witness somebody uh, departing this earth. And maybe they went into a depression or they had anxiety about how are they gonna pay the next month's bills. And so, it's not that we go out and say, I'm gonna cause you anxiety, I'm gonna cause you depression. It's typically something where we or our ancestors had made choices that were not selfless, that were not filled with love and light and compassion. They were not filled with the highest and best for everybody involved. And in those possible choices, uh, those the results of those choices impacted people in a way that brought about these emotional conditions. If that had been done in significant amounts, then that creates a significant spiritual debt. And that is also, according to these wisdom and teachings, the source of the blockages that are in the heart center, the heart chakra. And so it stands to reason that no medication is going to resolve something that has that kind of a root. Um, the, the general approach is adjusting the chemicals, uh, and that's adjusting things at the level of matter. 
And, and I want to state again, there's a great value in that I am a big fan of pain medication uh, when I'm suffering because I really don't want to suffer. But I will always look for a solution uh, as soon as I can to eliminate or alleviate that suffering. And so when we look at <coughs> um, adjusting things at the level of, mat of matter, we're at the bottom of the, the, uh, the human cycle, if you will. So one of the beautiful teachings that Master Shah brings to us is the order of, of how we come about our suffering, starting with soul being perfect. And um, soul has physical world experience. We are a person having, we are a soul having a physical experience. And so the soul leads the heart. The heart leads the mind. The mind leads the energy and the energy leads the matter. So I'll repeat that in a different way. The soul has an intention in this life. The intention is to purify, to become more pure, more love, more aligned to the heart of its creator. And so it sends that intention to the heart. The heart then sends uh, orders out to the mind. Now for a great deal of us, our mind is controlling. It cannot hear the heart and it cannot hear the soul. That means we're separate from our source, we're separate from our creator, we're separate from our birthright. And so that's why this education is here today. When we open and clear blockages in our seven soul houses, our chakras, when we clear these kinds of blockages, we can hear more clearly our heart. We can hear more clearly our soul. We can make better choices in our life, not go down those wrong paths. And so the order is soul leads the heart, heart leads the mind. When the mind is listening to the heart because we've done our job in clearing the blockages, then the mind says, oh, I like that idea. We can release these blockages in the heart center by doing service for others, by being of greater value, by chanting love, peace, and harmony. I can do practices and I can do forgiveness practice. The heart would say those kinds of things. The soul would say those kinds of things because the heart and the soul knows that uh, by doing forgiveness practice, these blockages will release. They know that by serving others, these blockages will release. The mind, on the other hand, is it's just you know a computer. It's just do this, do this, do that. It works on what it has been taught and what is accepted to be true, but it is not the boss. And so part and parcel of this whole movement uh, towards understanding that soul is the boss, towards moving uh, your, your soul journey into alignment with your creator is positioning yourself to have your heart and soul in control. When the mind then follows the heart, it gives orders to the energy of the body. Move this old energy out. You do that through employing the soul, heart, and mind in practices like the one I'm going to do in a few minutes. When you employ the soul, the heart, and the mind in a practice, you direct the energy. When you're directing the energy, it causes the matter to change. It causes the matter to retain its balance, to, to sustain its highest potential. And so um, energy and matter imbalances, in essence, is the core of what traditional Chinese medicine would say is at fault. Traditional Chinese medicine doesn't look higher to the heart and to the soul. It stays with energy and uses energy to transform the matter. And that's why it works where Western medicine doesn't work. And that's why Western medicine works where Chinese medicine does not work. Because they work, one works on energy, one works on matter. But they work best in combination with each other. What is higher than that is recognizing what caused it. When you can recognize what caused it, which is the nature of, um, which is the, um, uh, imbalances our spiritual debts. This is what brought that about. Then we can address it at that level. Now we're starting to move away the blockages at the level of soul, which caused the heart to open up and clear, which caused the mind to listen better. And the mind directs the chi and it starts moving that old energy out of the way, which then readjusts the physical matter. Make sense? Good. So now we will do a practice that employs all of these in one. 
<coughs> and so we're going to employ the fire element and we're going to do what's called soul communication. Base teaching of Master Shaw is everyone and everything has a soul. The chair I'm sitting on has a soul. The, uh, the computer screen or telephone you're watching me through or listening to me through has a soul. Some of you are going, what? You're turning your head sideways and you're raising your eyebrow? That's okay, not expect you to accept it as, as uh, factual. The reason why we say this is because everything is from Creator. Everything is made up of smaller and smaller specks of energy and matter, but it's still from Creator. It has a spark of divine in it. Therefore, it has a divine consciousness in it. Therefore, it has a soul. Makes sense more now, right? So everything has a soul. And when we connect to the soul of our chakras, of our organs or systems, of the emotion of depression or anxiety, when we connect to the soul of those that have been harmed in past lives or in this life, that especially those that have associations to this fire element imbalance, then we are connecting at the source or core level of the blockage. That's why there is well over thousands and thousands and thousands of documented uh, YouTube documented testimonials of the efficacy of these practices because we're not dealing with it at the energy matter level. So let's employ this practice now. Everybody sit up straight. <clears throat> Place your hands. We're going to go ahead and yeah, we're going to go ahead and maintain the soul light, soul service hand position. We place our hands like a prayer in front of our heart center. It's called a hand mudra. A prayer position is a hand mudra. Um, Master Shah suggests we drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. And he explains that this tells heaven, I am ready to receive your blessings. It comes through the right hand and then into your heart center. <clears throat> If it is un not, uh, not uncomfortable, then place your feet flat on the floor or sit up in lotus position. Close your eyes, bring your thoughts and your breath into your lower abdomen. For the remainder of this practice, keep your thoughts and your breath in your lower abdomen. Touch your tongue gently to the roof of your mouth. Keep it there very gently. And now let us connect. I will repeat several things throughout this practice. You may repeat if comfortable. Please repeat. Dear the Divine, dear my beloved Source Creator, I love you. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to receive this wisdom. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to bring balance to my imbalanced emotions of depression and anxiety and to bring and sustain balance for my fire element. Thank you. Dear all the beings of light, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Buddha, beloved Kuan Yin, beloved Krishna, beloved Ganesha, all angels, healing angels, archangels, masters, ascended masters, all beings of light, that wish to serve at this time. I love you. Could you please come at this time? Sit in my heart center. Bless me to fully open my heart and release anything that it would inhibit me from having balanced emotions and a balanced fire element. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what's called communicating with the outer souls. Now we communicate with the inner souls. Continue to repeat. Dear the soul of my heart center, my message center, I love you. You have the power to release blockages. You have the power to bring balance to any imbalances. You have the power to release any conditions of anxiety or depression. Do a great job. Thank you. So now that is called soul power. So with your eyes closed, with your hands in this position, we will chant a mantra for opening the heart and releasing these blockages. It's called Da I, 
D-A, and then another word, A-I. Da-I means greatest love. And I will utilize the Da-I calligraphy from Master Shah's book. I will connect with the blessings in it to serve you. So close your eyes. Visualize beautiful rainbow crystalline light coming into your heart center. You may see a beautiful crystal in your heart center, and as it spins, the light comes in from the divine, the Tao, the source, all the beings of light that are present. They are shining their light into your heart center, and as it hits the crystal, the light comes out in rainbow patterns and it clears the blockages. So visualize that as we chant. Da I 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 greatest love Da I greatest love melts all blockages, releases anxiety. Da I da I greatest love melts all blockages releases anxiety da i da i greatest love melts all blockages releases depression Da I da I greatest love melts all blockages opens my message center Da I opens my message center Da I releases blockages. Da I da I greatest love. Da I da I balances my fire element. Da I da I balances my fire elements. Da I da I balances my fire elements. Da I da I releases the condition of depression. Da I da I balances my fire element. Da I da I da I da I. Now continue to chant da I by yourself and I will offer a reading as to what is transpiring at this time. How? As the request went forward, countless beings of light came to serve. There are at this healing center great opportunities for blessings. 
and these servants at this center are dedicated to do so. In their calling forth, they have come to each of you. Each of you have unique blockages in your heart centers. For some of you, it is heavy on the ancestral side. For some of you, there are significant blockages related to trauma in love relationships. For some, one of you, there is significant sadness and grief for the loss of a pet. There are two of you who have significant sadness around children and their conditions. One of you has lost your child and has failed to fully let go of that and is actually creating a mild depression for you. There are many who have this in latent forms as a result of times in which they had not served well in previous lifetimes. Each of these are unique and each of these requires unique frequency and balancing to maintain health and wellness. Each of those on the line is being soothed at this time. There are literally teams of heaven's animals that work with the saints. They are at this time both removing blockages and communicating with the soul of the blockages. There have been many that have been harmed in many cases and their suffering was great. The communication is to convince them that you have learned your lessons, that you are worthy of being released of this debt. Some are agreeing, some are quite steadfast and have no interest to leave. These souls are hurt. They do not recognize that you understand truly what harm the ancestors might have brought, what harm your thoughts or words or actions might have brought. They wish for you to be more attuned and be in more authentic forgiveness. They ask to hear your request for forgiveness at this time. How? And so I will lead us in a forgiveness practice. This is something that you can never do enough of and if you do any version of this, it doesn't have to be the same, you will find great benefits. So if you are comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear all souls, dear the divine, I love you. I deeply and humbly, sincerely apologize to all souls for any harm brought upon them as a result of my ancestors or me making wrong choices, thinking wrong thoughts, or committing wrong actions. I am a much wiser and better person today. I would truly not go out of my way in any way to harm another soul to create the conditions of depression or anxiety. I am so sorry. I deeply and sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, apologize. I wish nothing more for you to not have the suffering you experienced. I ask most humbly that you please feel my heart feel of my soul and know that the lessons have been learned. Please release me from this debt. I would be greatly honored and appreciated. I will not make the same mistakes again. Let us continue to chant with the greatest love, sending our greatest love to all those that we may have made wrong choices against. We may have caused some significant blockages. 
Our ancestors may have, even if we are clean, our ancestors may have. So let us offer our love. Die, 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 greatest love. Melts all blockages, greatest love purifies my heart and soul. Die, die, releases depression and anxiety. Die, die, releases depression and anxiety. <clears throat> die, greatest love, opens my heart and soul. Die, die, opens my heart and soul. Greatest love, unconditional love, melts all blockages, purifies my heart and soul. Die, 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 And let us in our hearts bow our head to our beloved Creator, to all the beings of light, who shined their virtue, their love, and their light to assist us to remove our blockages. We offer our gratitude to Da'ai, the greatest love, and to the countless uh, blessings from all the beings of light. Countless, countless bow downs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I encourage each of you to share your experience with this practice. And I'd like to offer you an invitation to be aware of the opportunities that Master Shah has brought. He has many healers um, that have received transmissions that can melt these blockages about a hundred thousand times faster than we can do through our own practices in just a couple of minutes. And they can be extraordinary. Uh, one of the most potent ones is what I call the healing and transmission system. I shouldn't say what I call it, that's what Master Shaw calls it. And it has extraordinary abilities to uh, uh, bring such substantial light to the area that literally the darkness can no longer remain. The second request that comes is for that area, in this case the heart chakra, a light wall protection comes specifically to that area not your whole body, but to the area of request. And what this means is once the darkness leaves, it cannot return. And so now the person uh, automatically, I shouldn't say automatically, but in virtually every case, there is an, a very noticeable lightness because the heaviness that creates these conditions, that creates the anxiety and or the depression, no longer has a home. It no longer can use your, your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual body as its point of expression. The virtue comes and the debt is paid. The darkness leaves. The light comes back in and the light wall protection is offered. So this is an extra, 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 extra beyond, beyond, beyond extraordinary kind of blessing. There truly is nothing, nothing like it. I have offered this blessing to several others uh, and have seen nothing less than these results that I'm sharing with you. There is, of course, the necessity to maintain practice, to maintain forgiveness, but it is the greatest opportunity to move back to normality from where you may be if you're one of those that suffer from this kind of 
imbalance. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can contact me through my website that Kristen has posted, uh, asohaler at yahoo.com, or Facebook message me. If you know of people that you care about that have either of these emotional imbalances, please make sure that they're aware of this opportunity that is available for them. If you do, this, that kind of a blessing, of course, has an, an honor fee. Um, it's a couple hundred dollars. It's not, it's not a lot, really, when you look at how much we spend on medications and everything else. But, you know, there is an honor fee for it. But if you have financial restrictions, there are so many things that are still available for you. You can Google Master Shaw YouTube, type in Master Shaw YouTube and the word depression or the word anxiety. You will find videos and they have blessings built into them. You can receive complimentary blessings this way. So it's not about that part of it, the money part of it. It's about serving you. But if you have the opportunity to um, release these kinds of blockages uh, sooner, better, faster, highly recommend it. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for coming. Tomorrow we will focus on the uh, metal element. The metal element is associated with the lungs. It is associated with the large intestine and the emotional condition of grief and sadness, loss of loved ones, loss of job, loss of pets, loss. Um, uh, that's grief or just sadness. You don't even know why. Um, there are also other associations with it, including sinus and sinus cavity, uh, allergies, many, many lists goes on with these. And so uh, I encourage you to tune in to tomorrow uh, regarding that subject matter. I look forward to serving you, and I will complete by saying, love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.